Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of Oregon Voters Digest, folks. Again, uh, again, hey, this has been some very interesting times that we've been having and whatever. I realize there's a, there's a number of activities that are happening at this point in time as we speak. There's Florence, Missouri. I guess we, everybody knows it's been on the it's been on the screen, it's been on the media for days, and naturally with the advent of uh, of the smartphones, it's all over the place, and people are discussing that issue too aspect of it. And then Robin Williams died; he, he just passed away, and that's another interesting story for for a number of folks. And in terms of how he, he passed away, I thought that was an interesting situation at that end of it. And uh, and then the war. I mean, there's there's all kinds of things that are happening, but. But we thought maybe we uh, we do something this in this particular show, that's again it should be a lead, and that it uh, and that is to pay tribute to uh, the former governor of, of Oregon, former governor Vic Atia. Vic uh, was was a very dear friend, but besides that, he was as far as I'm concerned, he was a top-notch governor here in the state of Oregon. He, he basically crossed party lines across the board. And I uh, had the opportunity to interview him about uh, well, one of the last interviews that he he had, and um, and, uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna give you the opportunity to see that interview. And joining me today is, is Bob Williams. You know Bob, and Bob has, has been on interviews with uh, with Vic, with me, and Pat Cal Henry was there too right. at one point in time. We did one with Cal also too. So um, we'll get some comments from Bob, and and we're just gonna just kind of. Sit back after after that and let you watch the interview. And then at the end of the of the interview uh, with Vic, uh, with Bob and I are going to spend a few more minutes and maybe talk about some of the local events and things of that nature. And you know, but Bob, what do you think? Well, Vic, Vic was, uh, you know, like you said, he was one of those governors that uh, crossed party lines. Uh, he he did it his way, mm -hmm. and he tried to be inclusive. And that was, uh, that was one of the things that I can say, you know, in my time here when, you know, I was kind of new here in, in uh, Oregon uh, at that time, just getting my feet wet in the politics and mm -hmm. things of this nature. But he he was one, he, uh, you know, we had just, just left an era where we were trying to decide, do we want people to come here? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden we are trying to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what I remember about the Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, there, there's some of the other little highlights of things that, like for instance, the community of Black Affairs. Remember the Black right. Affairs? He, he he created those issues. In fact, he signed Jackie Winters. I think that Jackie was the one, Senator Winters, right, mm -hmm. to basically put that piece together. Right. And uh, I thought that was interesting. You got Hispanic Affairs. We had um, Women Affairs, right? Yeah, he was he was definitely trying to be inclusive and try to get and he was trying to get more and more people to. Uh, become involved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's that's the one thing I remember he's, he, him telling me. He says, uh, "You know, get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just sit there. Get involved." Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, you know I didn't listen to many Republicans, but I listened to him. Well, you got you got me. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and you. <laughs> no, but you're, you're right, and yeah. I and I, I think back about some of the other folks that he reached out at and gave them opportunities. You got the Berna Plumber, right? Remember Berna Plumber. You got um, uh, uh, let's see, Turan, the K Turan, K Turan, K Turan, and then that's Jackie. That's really how she basically got her start right. in politics. She was on Boozman there for a while. And then she ran for office in Salem, and she mm -hmm. stayed in Salem. I mean, yes. it's been interesting to see if if, if Vic had assigned her here in Northeast Portland or in Portland. Mm -hmm. I think it's been very interesting. It's yeah. been very interesting because she's she's very dynamic, very outspoken kind of a person. She gets involved, get 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 involved, yeah. if you will. She will tell you exactly how it is. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's what you know. Uh, we've had our conversations yes and because it was never we've never had an yes. argument we always had a conversation before she became elected and after she was elected right, right, right. and one of the things that uh, I like you know I don't say this about many Republicans but there's a couple of them in, in the uh, state Senate and uh, where I can walk in their office mm -hmm. and they and they'll listen mm -hmm. you know and knowing that uh, you know my feelings as far as democratic uh, issues go and they'll listen and they'll tell me why or why not. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's what that's one of the things that uh, I like about liked about Vic 
mm-hmm. is the fact that he would tell you what he was going to do, mm-hmm. how he was going to do it, mm-hmm. and either you got on board or got out of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was that was the nice thing about him. Well, you know, just like Freddie, when you think about his background and whatever, he had brothers, you know what I mean? The, yeah. Tia Brothers, Carpety, Car- this, that, and the other, and dad was in the business, and, mm-hmm. and it was really a very family-oriented kind of a deal. I'm giving you a little, some, a little bit ahead of myself on the interview aspect of it, but, but uh, you could show the commitment that he had. He didn't... Uh, you know, he was going to school. You know, he played ball mm-hmm. for a while, and then when Dad sort of passed away, or whatever, he, uh, he had to go back into the business. Right. And so he quit school and went to the business mm-hmm. uh, to basically keep the business going aspect of it. And, and then actually, he he was he, he had he couldn't serve the military because he was going to be involved in that. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, he had an accident while he was some issues anyway with uh, with playing football aspect of it. But neat guy, he would never say no to you. Right. He would, like I said, he was always there to open. I remember all the time, the number of times that I've run for office, he was always there, and he never said no. And any time, he always counseled me and whatever. But he said, but he never said, Bruce, don't do this or don't do that. He said, just go out there and, as you say, just do it. Do it. Just get it done. Yeah. And so I really appreciate the fact that uh, he he was giving us that kind of an advice. Boy, what a guy. Well, I tell you what we're gonna do. I guess we're gonna go on and uh, we're gonna go on and look at this interview. And then we're going to come back, Bob. Okay. And maybe we might throw, spend a couple more minutes on some other things, too, at the same time. Sounds good. Here it is, folks. Let's look at, let's look at the interview. I'm doing well. well. You know, I, I talk about the longevity of our acquaintanceship. Yes. And while you were talking, I noticed that when I first knew you, you had more hair and it was, it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. You got more than me, though. So, so same thing with me. <laughs> no, we've known each other a long time. Yes, we have. Yes, yeah. we have. And in fact, um, let's start off that way. And this is uh, how did you? Is this was Oregon your home? I mean, is this is yeah. you born and raised here? I was born and raised here. Uh, uh, twin brothers, kind of older than I am, uh, not much, but older. Than uh, we grew up on the south on Holiday Street, which is over by the Lloyd Center. <coughs> Today, uh, my home is a parking lot and a Mack stop over, over there on the east side. Went to uh, Holiday School, which is not there anymore. Went to Washington High School, and it's closed. But I've said the University of Oregon is safe for a while. Like, I don't think <laughs> they're going to go out of business. Um, spent two years in Oregon. I grew up in the family business. Uh, and That's the road business, right? And it's still going right now, right? It's still going. Now it's it's 112 years old. 112. Atia Brothers. Atia Brothers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's wonderful. In fact, we just happen to be sitting on top of it as far as the home office is. The yeah, office it used here. to be here. The office used to be here. Yeah. And well, it's still going. And it's still, it's still family. Yeah. Okay. It's not sold. And I'm very pleased about that. My brothers and I, of course. In the business. I'm not sure my dad was convinced that I was going to go in the business. I was always arguing with him. But, um, the way it worked out was that he, he passed away when my brothers were overseas. They were in infantry. They took Battle of the Bulge, were taken prisoners. Uh, anyway, uh, the three of us spent our lives in the business. That's pretty good. We'd argue, of course, but uh, uh, highly uh, affectionate to each other. And now that we're this age, uh, you know, you begin to hit the end of the trailing from very yeah. far away. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, yes, I was born and raised here. Born My dad raised. came here. I'm here in the United States. I'm not, I'm not exactly what country? sure, but what I country? think. 1901 or 1901 something, or something like that. Wow. And he came. My uncle came first, so he would have been a couple years before. From where? That. What, what country? And anyway, it's it's it, to me it's a history of the son of an immigrant mm-hmm. becomes a governor. So um, I, I think that was that's sensational. Yes. Uh, it's just wonderful. Well, I don't know where else in the world I can be. And maybe I can get another soapbox, and I have it, to have your listeners think about this. Yes. Is there anywhere in the world 
that people in the world want to leave, let's say, from France, they want to they want to immigrate to Saudi Arabia to become a citizen, or people from Japan want to go to China, where they want to become a citizen. America is the only country in the world where people in the world want to come to the United States. There's no other. They want to come here. Why? Because here is better than there. And so I get kind of angry when people take it so flippantly that what we have here, young people have hardly any understanding about the beauty and the marvel of what we have in the United States. Why do you think that's so? You think maybe there's a lack of education that's, and well, you know, the school a whole system? Lot, a whole lot of things. Okay. Uh, when I say a whole lot of things, uh, TV doesn't help. TV doesn't? It doesn't help. Okay. You, on the TV, you've got to blow up things and jump in bed or shoot mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a popular mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Uh, it, everything seems to speed up with them. And they had their, um, their wishes were, you know, instant. Instant. Uh, you want something, okay, you can have it. And I see them, you know, they tell me, we're going to take the power to the people. I said, they don't understand. People have the power. That's what this country's all about. And they don't, so that means they don't understand this country. And I think, uh, well, I have to say our governments, city, county, state, national, too many of those people, when they get elected, um, running again for re-election, so they're voting according to how's this going to help my re-election. Oh, that would take three hours if there's conversation. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. There's a lot of things happening. That's right. It's, it's right. not as simple. Not as simple at this point in time. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, well, first off, let's, let, let's recognize uh, your, 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 your most precious, your, your wife. Yeah. Shepherd by a bit. We're still married. It's 68 years. Yes. Which to me says how how patient she is. She had to be with okay. a life with me. I mean, we don't yell at each other and we're helpful with each other, but you know, I'm out campaigning or yes. do Boy Scouting or whatever. And um, and we're getting older now, so the effects of age are taking over. Um, I, I get a kick. I told my wife the other day, there's so many ads on television uh, to make you healthier, your cholesterol or whatever. And all that does is make you live longer so you can hurt longer. <laughs> all all the, these pains that you get when you get old makes you live so you can get dirty. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's still marvelous because I had I had open heart surgery now uh, five six years ago. Mm -hmm. My father died uh, in angina. Uh, he was 62, and I'm saying if he'd lived my in my age, he'd have had another 20 years or more of life. So. It's, 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 you can't really complain Today, too much yes. about that. Everybody, everybody wants to live a little bit longer. I mean, yeah. not that the medical profession wants you to live a little yeah. bit better from, from an economic standpoint. I will tell you, among the reasons I feel so keenly about this country, besides what I told you earlier, mm -hmm. where the son of an immigrant could do that, my dad, when he died, there was an editorial in the Oregonian about him. And at that time, I said, you know, what a country this is. Here this man comes from another country to America and establishes a business, is recognized by the community with the editorial. Isn't that great? I said, that's just, that's just marvelous to think that that can happen. And I remember that it has affected me quite a bit, thinking how strong and how wonderful. 
it can be, but these are immigrants. And there's children, me. But as you go down the line and you have less and less knowledge of what happened, less and less keenness about democracy. Anyway, I got a lot of soapboxes. I too many. No problem. Now, what country was it? Was, was Syria. Syria. Yeah. Syria. Okay. Syria. That's How was it? That's in also Syria? interesting because Syria now is in the news and and Damascus is in the was the southern part of Syria. Uh, Homs, H O M S, is in north of Damascus, and our village is very close to Homs, and it's a village. And there was a lot of fighting that went on at Homs, and then a little further north in Aleppo. People ask me about that. I talked with my cousin's wife, who lives in, in what they call the family home in, in, in Amar. Presently. And she came, she came here. She, most of her family is in Pennsylvania, but she has a son here. Mm -hmm. His name is Victor. Victor, too. Yeah, and I told him, for crying out loud, pay your bills. His name is Victor Atia. <laughs> And so I had a chance to talk with her not too long ago. And I've talked to others. Now, I, I, I'm not going to say that they represent the majority, but I think so. I've yet to talk to anybody who is not in support of the government. Mm -hmm. Now, you read the newspapers, and, and you, the only ones that get any attention are the rebels. And they've got a good system of getting news out. Assad is not doing the same, and so all the news says how bad the Assad government is. Whether that's right or wrong, I have yet to talk to anybody that uh, doesn't support the current administration. I have been to Syria, I've been to my family home. I talked with the current president Assad with his father three times when I was, each time I would go. And it's not America, but there isn't any other America or people who want to go there. Mm -hmm. And I know why we have to believe that every country has to be precisely like us. I just presume there was internal security, but there's no evidence over evidence of it to me as a visitor. I went to Iraq after they fought with Iran and before Kuwait. And there I could tell, but I could really tell there's the internal security. I mean, that was really something. So, it, as I say, it's not like America, but it's not cruel, it's not bad, it's not, it's, it's a good country. Uh, so I, I really don't know. I think maybe, let me give you my thought. Somebody, what do you think, Vic? Well, I look at uh, Egypt, and they're still fighting as to who's going to run the government. Mm -hmm. They may elect it, but they're still fighting about that. Iraq is still fighting after they took both. So they got rid of the leaders, but then all these other sectarian units, they're all fighting for, for position. So you have an unstable country. Now I don't mean stability or cruelty, which would be Iraq, really. Now they're the ones that really were uh, no good folks. But I would tell you also that President Assad, that's the father, hated it, the same. I mean, next door neighbor. Between them, they were. I know. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's come back here. Let's say, for instance, and as you were growing up and whatever, what were some of the things that you were that you appreciated doing the during those early days, if you will? And I maybe I'd say first time I appreciated more as I grew older, and I'm talking about mother. Yeah. And I think, look back and think about mother, and I really think I her, appreciate her very much. Our lives. My two brothers and myself, was, we went through the Depression. 
I was born in 23, so those years I was old enough to recognize what was going on. We lived uh, right near what we call Sullivan's Gulch, which is 84 now, so you have the rails there and a highway. And so that's where Sullivan's Gulch, people were living in paper shacks. Mm -hmm. They'd come to the door, but they would always say they wanted to work for something, for lunch. I'll work, I'll do something. And they didn't want to say, give me lunch. They say, I'll, I'll want to work for something. Mm -hmm. So it was even when they were our straits, they were proud enough to say, just give it without doing anything. I don't remember that happening. Uh, but we, as young people, uh, just kind of moved along. Mm -hmm. Our parents made sure we, we ate enough. I, I spoiled my mother was a good cook. She was a good cook. Good cook. Oh, and she, she cooked this Arabic food. Not all the time, because it takes a long time to do it. But I remember mother would spend a whole day in the kitchen making bread and making all the different uh, uh, Arabic food. And uh, we, we always sit down at dinner, always. My father, my two brothers, myself, my mother. And we just like that, like a, vac <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner after she worked all day <laughs> fixing the food. But she, she loved uh, us kids. And you know, uh, I don't know if she would be taking them for for abusing us because spanking was that was legit. One of those During my time, in, in those yeah. Days. yeah, yes. And mother's mother's weapon of of choice was the hairbrush. Yes. <laughs> and she made us go get it. <laughs> That's even worse. That was even worse. But uh, anyway, we, we were lucky. You look back and then you know you're lucky. Mm -hmm. And we went through school. The one thing I, again, looking back, am so pleased with. In all this school, we were really a mix. Arab, Italian, Jap Japanese, blacks. Really a mix going to school. So, as I've come through life, all of what I just told you didn't make any, I'm not making a distinction. Right, right, right. I mean, we were buddies, we played ball together, we would fight, we would, you know, all these things. Right, right. And, and so I had no hurdle to get over mm -hmm. other people. I mean, not had that experience of living with, I, I saw it, I mean, I ran into something a while ago. If we were all blind, mm -hmm. we wouldn't know who to hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, a, it's interesting that you know, that people have those. And I, anyway, it was a, a good childhood, I'd say. They took good care of us, mother and dad. And as I told you, we went to holiday school, Washington High School. And a couple of years, I, I I had two years in Oregon with my brothers. And then the war, they went back and finished. I did. I was married. I was in the business. Mother said, to, maybe my wife said, you ought to go back and finish. Finally, I said, honey, the only reason I want to go back is to play. Uh, you want to answer phone? You want to answer? You want to? I play football. Okay. And huh? answer the phone for a minute. Let's cut it off for a second. Yeah. Mr. Miles here. Yeah. Denny and Jerry on Monday, the tenth of September, eleven thirty, your office. Then I'll oh, have lunch. Good deal. So she's going to come in her car because I'm going to do some stuff with my sister afterwards. But uh, she said she would be delighted and is delighted to be asked, and we'll be there. I'll see you then. All right, boss. That's good news. All right, bye-bye. Then he's still in the Uh When he's talking, uh, 
That's Denny. He was my president. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, Denny. And Jerry was my chief of staff. Yes. Remember both of them. Very much. Yes. Very much so. That's good. I'm glad they're going to be coming up. Oh, you want to go through something again? Yeah. Let's, let's just go. No. Just, just We'll just continue talking. It don't matter. You, you got us back on? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll continue on. Uh, now, as you... Okay. Now that um, you graduated now from high school, right? And you, you're running... Pretty well running the business. The brothers are... Uh, in the, in the military, right? In the war, so well, we, we, my first again, my, my, we were in Oregon, and we all enlisted along with several other fraternity brethren, quite a few on the campus. And they had told us, it's called the Enlisted Reserve Corps, what it's Reserve called. Corps. And they said, okay, you, you enlist and we won't call you out till June, which we thought was a good deal. That'll be at the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a uh, the osteo in my ankle, and I knew it. I uh, played ball in high school uh, and college, football it is. But I knew it, and we'd wrap it and all. And, but I said, gosh, I'm going in. I better get this fixed before I go. So in January, I, I about between fall and winter term, I got it fixed. But they called us out in March, mm. and I got it kissed up to <laughs> up past my knee. Well, short of it is that, that I didn't go, they went. I w went to the draft center to, to, to get uh, the physical, but they really report to Utah or uh, Friday about the fourth thing, go home, wait for the orders. And the orders were discharged. <laughs> but your intentions were there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did you get into politics? Let's talk about politics now. How did you get involved in politics? But what, what you really should you really hear asking that would be active politics, public office. Public office. I was I was interested in what the government was doing. I was really angry about what they were doing. I'd read the Kiplinger letter, I remember that so strongly. Kiplinger had this about whether it's weekly or monthly, and he'd write up what's going on in Washington, D.C., and then you paid it for the service. So I remember one thing, some issue, he said, well, such and such is an issue, but nothing will happen this year. This, this is an election year. And I said, what? Then, well, what difference does that make? You're not going to do anything because this is an election year? If it's a problem, you deal with it. Well, that was sort of my who I was, and I would complain. And it's interesting how it all happened. I had a friend older than I was, and he had been to a meeting with the Multnomah Central Committee, probably Republican Central Committee, and they were looking for candidates, which I find now is common. And Somebody mentioned my name. He said, well, he's got Multnomah County, Washington County. So then he called me. Are you thinking if I'm running? Well, uh, something. Why not now? I don't know why not now. So help me, Bruce. I had absolutely no idea that I would be involved in public collective office for 28 years. 28 years? 28 years. I had no idea at all. I just, you know, this was a two-year house. Another two years, another two years, and that went through the Senate. And then when McCall finished his eight years, and I said, I can do this job. And I <laughs> well, I lost to Bob Straub, who was just a fine man. I, uh, and he won. It's the only race I ever lost it was the general election. And then four years later, I ran and reversed. Uh, Bob was a good man. And uh, I actually was involved with this advisory committee when they were writing the book about it. And I was honored to do that. It's part of the civility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They asked me to be on their advisory committee, for the archives, mm -hmm. which was on uh, Western Oregon University. 
not only that, but asked me to write the introduction to his book. Now, where do you find that today? Wow. You know, who, uh, the, 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 wow. your opponent is, is the bad guy. I mean, the worst you can find. There's that joke about a man wanted to find his, what his heritage was. And so he went to somebody and asked him, can you trace my heritage? Yes, he's got about, about 3,000 numbers. Ooh, that's a lot. Can I do it cheaper? Yes. Run for office. <laughs> hey, you can find what's your heritage is. Um, anyway, I, 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 I just, not for a moment. And, and I think that's where I was going to end as governor of Oregon. And I was, I was in a tough time. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, unemployment was 12.6 percent. Inflation was going at 13 percent. Interest was 21 percent. I was talking to somebody not too long ago who was in that period of time as a young man. He bought a house. He thought he had a great deal. He got an interest of 18 percent. And he thought he had a good deal. So when you have all that unemployment and, and uh, those other things were right. But we got to it. And I had good people working for it. You know, I know that. In fact, I want to set the record straight for the rest of the folks out there, too. I remember that I was trying to be very active, as you know, from politics and whatever. Yes. And uh, we had, to, and actually, I had concern about diversity in the state and this, that, and the other, and, mm -hmm. and suggested that maybe one of the vehicles would be to run for office. And I think during that particular time, I ran. I think I yes. ran, and and, yes. and you encouraged me to do that. Yes. And went around and encouraged me to go to the various meetings, if you will, when you invited. And I can still remember going around the state. And I really appreciate that. And I want I want to thank you for that opportunity because it gave me an opportunity to see Oregon in, in a different kind of a light that was respected. There was no problems, if you will. And, and then that, as a result of that, um, they really tried to get me involved in a number of things, but. It's like anything else, I, but I want to thank you for that because oh, uh, yeah, you were the one that really helped me out and get me involved in politics. Still is today, and we are doing it right now. So, so thank you for that. And I want you to be straight. It wasn't somebody. running against you. You know that. We talked about that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, now, tell me, uh, you were the you were the last, probably, most prominent Republican that was ever elected to the state of Oregon uh, in, in any capacity as governor. What, what, what happened, Vic? What do you think? Well, what happened to our party? I mean, what happened I to think our the... What do you think? Let me call them the right-wing Republicans. Okay. The ardent, they're purer than you are kind of folks. But I told my friends, who would, let me call them moderate, these folks I mean, we I said, we've got to get on the stick. Mm -hmm. Because these folks proved that the system works. Now, let me explain. They decided that, my God, I'm going to take charge of things. So they got precinct committee people, mm -hmm. elected their precinct committee people, who elected their chairman, mm -hmm. who elected the state chairman. Mm -hmm. And so now they are calling the shots in terms of what the public reads about. They hurt us badly. Probably the, the best identifiable one was when Dave Frohmeyer ran for governor. And Dave really would have won. But no, they had to put up an independent candidate. And that independent candidate made it possible for Dave Fulmar to lose. And Dave's a good man. Uh, people believe the Republicans, I'm a Republican. All Republicans uh, uh, are against abortion. All Republicans are against gays and lesbians, which is not true. Both of those subjects are not partisan. Democrats feel exactly the way Republicans do. 
But the Democrats are very clever, and so they pasted us. Republican, oh well, that's what Republicans are. And uh, you know, we just never quite get on this thing. It's yet to, to move ourselves. And now Alan Alley is our chairman, and we are really moving center. And those that are way off on the right are beginning to recognize the damage that they've done. So uh, gradually we're moving back. And I feel it. I feel it in this in the past election recently and in the future. Um, so there, there needs to be a strong two party. Sometimes the Republicans were in charge years ago. When I was governor, the governor was a Republican, the Secretary of State Republican, the State Treasurer Republican, the Secretary of State Republican. And, and uh, now that's not there at all. And so it switched over to the Democrats. Um, but you ask me what? It's, it's sort of a short story. A short story on that, too. You know, when I think about the diversity of this, in this state, you, know, you talked about it early on, about, but I, but I also remember the time when you, you acted upon it when you were governor, uh, the, the, the various commissions that you put together. In fact, you initiated that whole piece about the, uh, about the Black Commission on Black Affairs, the Hispanics, the, I mean, the whole nine yard aspect of it. And I think uh, Jackie was working for you during that particular time, and you she basically gave her that assignment, so to speak. Yes. And, um, uh, what, what's your feel about that? What was your What was your feel about putting something like that together? Well, you felt there was a need to do that. Yeah. I take the black. I met with that community and uh, the leaders, at least mainly of uh, the churches. Mm -hmm. And during the course of the discussion, I said, "Now I really want to do something for the black community." Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is, so I can't tell you. I'm going to promise you this. I can promise you, however, that I sincerely want to do something. And then I stopped and said, "Now I know you've heard this before <laughs> from other candidates, and I know that. Well, I mean, I can't prove anything. Mm -hmm. Well, out of it all, though, the one thing I believe strongly that there." should not be a need for Commission on Blacks or Commission on Hispanics or Commission on right. Women or I honestly believe that. But there needs to be pressure to move us in that direction. And that's why I supported uh, the ones that you mentioned. So that's how it all happened. And I was pleased. It, I think I also started the Commission on Indian Services, the Native right, Americans. Right. I think that one and the others that I started, the Ways and Means gave us a few dollars that, that legitimized, but they were given us a fishing mm -hmm. permit to go get some money. So in other words, they didn't fund us, they said, <laughs> now go get money. <laughs> That's how we started. But they soon learned that that was an important thing. So. It's well integrated, however. Well, you know, as I, as you were doing this, and in fact, I, I think you even, uh, even, I was appointed to, I think I remember I was appointed, you appointed me to that first one. In fact, yeah. I spent some time on that. But I, I, but I also think about uh, the Republican Party as a whole, from a historical standpoint, Lincoln Republican during that particular era, yeah. all of the, the diversity things that we had done during that particular era, but we're not taking credit for it today. Yeah. What's the, what, what do you think? Why, why is that so? Is it because of the, the makeup I, of the party I, I today? I know for a positive fact, from my own personal knowledge, that, and I'm speaking now generally, the Republicans are more sensitive to diversity than the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And I, when I say that to you, that's not, not a partisan remark. I remember, I can, remember comments and actions actually by Democrats in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Here again, I don't know, maybe they're more clever. That we're for the fat cats, we're for the rich, 
and I went out to the little guy. Bruce, as you remember, there was a burning of a cross of a black bed while I was governor. And I was indignant about that. So I got to working with uh, attorney, yeah, in that case, this uh, attorney general was Dave Frommeyer, and then region 10 attorney, we're trying to figure out some way that we could com combat that kind of thing. And we finally came up with the bill that would make uh, racial and religious harassment a felony crime. So I introduced that in the star there. So. The Democrats controlled, uh, as a matter of fact, they controlled my entire 28 years. But uh, I thought, well, this will go swishing right through. It was the next to the last bill passed before Sidney died, before that. And I had two, and I won't identify them. Uh, they came in my office that night, okay, those Democrats. And they wanted to make some changes. So they were saying, if you do that, we'll help us. And I said, no, I won't do that. And if you kill the bill, the whole world will know who did it. So they, finally, so they were holding back, using this as a hammer, all session. And I thought, but the Democrats were controlled. Yeah, surely, it gets against the racial and religious harassment. Right. Well, that would be one I can identify for you, but there are many, many other more comments, talk, discussions, and all that. And, yeah, you're right, you talk about Lincoln. I've been doing some reading, I've read all of books, about what he went through and how he first was not so sure, and uh, anyway, he finally did a gutsy thing for yeah. you, but he did. Yeah. And uh, then as the years moved along, you know, we took, well, like we're like downtrodden. It's, it's our, our fault where we let things happen that shouldn't have happened. We and I were talking about, oh, the guys are beating up on us. Well, I, I'm still optimistic. Uh, I think that this, we, we need it. we. It's our responsibility right. to let people know who we really are. Right, right. Would you like to reflect a little bit about the uh, our present uh, uh, political issue right now, which is the, which is the presidential election, if you will? Would you like to reflect on that? Whatever you want to say. What do you what do you think in terms of today? No, it's going to sound real partisan, but no problem. What, what do you feel? Obama is uh, President Obama is not a mean man. He's not a bad man. He's just not a capable president. That doesn't mean that he ought to go shoot himself or anything. I don't mean that at all. He's just not a good president. We are in a much deeper problem, deeper problem, and closer to. Been a disaster uh, in a few years. He's been president. He's a marvelous speaker, but there's not much behind that. I worry about some of the old guard that are advising him, and maybe he would like to do something that he said he wanted to do. I don't know that, but he should not be president again. Uh, Romney, I'm confident and feel good about. Uh, I can't say I'm wild, but that we have choices to make. Choices, Romney or Obama. We don't have any other choice. And I think we need a person like Romney who's been in business, has experience, has been in government. Uh, See, Obama was just a congressman for one or two terms. I don't remember now when he became president of the United States. So he had really very little personal uh, education of all kinds of things. 
So I think I think probably if we put them down and say, okay, I'm going to hire somebody. Here, here's my qualification. If you're going to hire them, you'd hire around me. That's where I'm coming. So I hope it happens. I think it's good. I, I, I worry about the country. It doesn't happen. I remember uh, on that same note, uh, many folks were excited about the fact that an African American was elected uh, uh, president of these United States, which was a first. And in all due respect, I I felt good about it. But and then I'd been very much involved in politics and, and felt good about it. And that he was running against uh, uh, Senator McCain at the time, and I just happened to have met uh, Senator McCain uh, during that particular time. And uh, that to being a, a war hero. And, and, you know, and, 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 uh, and whatever, and I can remember talking to him about the fact that we should reinstitute the draft because that's how I came here, remember? And it really got a lot of the young folks the opportunity to get out of the situation and get in a more positive light. But anyway, that he opted not to do that. But the thing that I remembered that I that was really, I really felt good about it during that particular time, when the whole issue of race in one of his debates and one of his talks tried to raise his head. Remember the lady tried to bring up some issue about race or whatever, and he said he would not tolerate that. Remember that? I really respected him for that, that aspect of it. And I guess, um, uh, naturally, it, it is an issue today that's, as you say, as, as I listen to you about the business aspect of it, you're right. Uh, you need someone in business. It's, a, it's unfortunately that um, uh, uh, it's still, as a businessman, he still has to reflect the fact he's got to get, he's looking at the bottom line, so to speak. And, and as I look at this piece, I, I, but most of us don't understand that. You know, the, the race has a more relevancy, if you will, in terms of the media. A lot of times there's nothing folks there like yourself to educate folks about what it is. It's not about race right now. It's about the bottom line, getting people to work. Yeah. And he is a good man, as far as I'm concerned, but the experience yeah. is something that is not an issue. Yeah, there's a... Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, they, people have an idea this is the enemy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's yeah. the enemy, yeah. not the enemy. He be just let's be logical about it. Has he done a good job? Let's be right about it. Are things better for you than they yeah, were today, yeah. three years yeah. ago? No. Um, does. I would probably have more experience, background, and knowledge. Yeah. You know, it, instead of feeling that, 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 that like, this person is a mean person, and he's, you know, Obama's a, a good man, he's just not a capable president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's the way he is. And so that when I come down, I wasn't merely being partisan, mm -hmm. because I'm, well, you know, yes. I'm probably less partisan than most people you've talked to. Uh, so that's the way I see it. I didn't pay much attention to the convention. I listened in a little bit, but not much. I've been to four conventions, and uh, that's, that's two more than I really wanted. <laughs> I made the one. I did the one. Uh, and. So I understand what goes on and yeah. what this decided to do. Now the Democrats will have their chance to take a shot at Republicans. Mm -hmm. I understand that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, what was it? Some news people were talking about the, the convention system mm -hmm. and our system of electing president. And about the subject, the title that was somehow it works. We don't really know why, but it somehow works. <laughs> somehow it works. No, that's, uh, that's, that's why it is. That's somehow it works. Well, I tell you, I have enjoyed talking with you. It's been great. Uh, and uh, we've done this before. Yes. And we've been old friends for a long time. Yes, we have. And when you called, I just had <laughs> talked to you. This is not, you can cut this off, but you yes. said you saw okay. uh, 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 Berna? Uh, 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 Berna Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, Berna. She, yeah, she, she, she sends her regards, by the way. She was oh, the, the, I saw her the, on the street. I saw her on the street. Yes, yes. And uh, she, she, what, tell me about her. Isn't that something? Is she working or what's she? Actually, she, I met her the other day because as you know, this is not on the, you can cut that off, you can cut it off now. 
Okay. Here recording. You, you know, Vic, I, I was thinking uh, before we close this situation, I'd like for you, you, you made mention about the fact that maybe one of the highlights that uh, uh, that you were involved with with Jackie Winters, who basically works, she's now Senator Winters, you yes, know, yes. she's still still active, so to speak. Absolutely. But you remembered something that you felt uh, well, that should be said. It's, it's interesting that Jackie was uh, the one that actually started uh, what we now have as a food bank. Really? And we call it Oregon Food Share, and this is when uh, Congress had passed a bill and, and the food stamps were worthless and people called and were, she was our citizen representative and they're hungry. Jackie, we got to do something. We can't just wait for Congress to correct this. And so I get credit for it. She's the one that did it. Wow. And I keep saying that, and, but I don't feel too bad about it. When I say that, I get credit for something I didn't do. <laughs> but she was working for you, though. <laughs> oh, okay. She was working for you. It comes out even. But Jackie yeah, yeah. knows, and I made it as publicly as I can make it. Yeah. And uh, But she's one of my success stories. Wow. And the other one is Kate Turan, who Kate, worked yes. for me. And now she's the head of uh, the Volunteers of America. Right, right. And she's proven to people that she deserves to do the job in the governor's wow. office that she's in now. Those are the joys that you get. Wow. The things wow. that happen. Wow. Wow. And thank you for me, too, by the way, oh, okay. for putting the Oregon Voters Digest together have? and support it. All right. Well, look, on that particular note, we want to thank you. Governor, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well. We really appreciate that. Tell Dolores I said hi. And give, I will. Give her a hug for me. I will. And maybe at some point in time, I might be able to pick you up and show you enormous kitchen. Okay. We, got a little, we, got a little, okay. we got a kitchen up there. We serve oh. some nice meals up All there right. at Jansen okay. Beach, okay? Yes. With that, thank you very much, and again, we, it's been a pleasure um, interviewing the governor, and, and hopefully all of you will watch, and if you do watch it, you can watch it on YouTube, if you will, and I'm going to put that piece on, and, and you can send it to your friends and whatever. It's very, very important. Again, thank you very much. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, Oregon Voters Digest. Governor, thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome back, folks. Well, as you can see, uh, that was quite an interview. I mean, what do you, what do you think, Bob? Hey, um, you know, he just kind of laid it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went across party lines. I mean, uh, Kate, the Democrat, uh, uh, sen the senator, you know, I mean, he, he brought people along. And, I, you know, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what the politics is supposed to be about. You're not supposed to be cutting people up because they are, have a D by their name and you have an R by, or an I by, the, by your name. You know, it's about all of us. And that's what, that's, that's big. I agree. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Because as you know, here on the show, uh, we've been together for years, and and we've always tried to deal with the issues, right? And the solutions of these issues. And uh, we may be opposing parties, but the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, the issues are still there, and people will be looking for solutions, whether you are the independent, libertarian, the, the like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a good example, and it's a very timely uh, example. Unfortunately, he, he passed away, but. But we're right in the midst, if you will, of picking up another leadership uh, for the state of Oregon as far as governor is concerned and, and uh, some other important races that are being run today. And uh, so we, we're still, we're still in, a, in, a, in an era of times that people are still struggling. Oh, yes. We're still struggling. And, you know, I was just looking last week at, uh, at issues within the party, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I began to question, but I began to question a long time ago. That's kind of why I got away from politics and got kind of pulled back on the show a little bit because I wanted to get my, my vision became a little blurred. And, you know, listening to uh, uh, Vic and, uh, and some other people that have talked to me in person, you know, I realized that I can't just sit on the sideline mm -hmm. and depend on someone else to do it. You know, you have to get in there, and that's why I'm getting ready to get back involved. Uh, because I thought, well, I, you know, all these years for the last, Vic said he went to four uh, conventions, I went to four. Mm -hmm. And after four, you're like, man, I don't really want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have went to six, but I had two of them I decided I didn't want to go to. And it's it's one of those things where, you think that you have served your time trying to help and you realize that the people that are coming along 
haven't put in anything in the front side to take your place. And why is that? Because you didn't train them. Mm -hmm. And I look at it and I go, there was no one that I tried to help along as far as on a constant on a constant basis. There are people that I helped in situations, but on a constant basis. And that's one of the things that we have to do. Otherwise, we continue to try and put a spoke, uh, invent the wheel, mm -hmm. not put a spoke in the wheel mm -hmm. and to true it. And so we have to, we can't, we just can't n walk away. Mm -hmm. We have to stay involved. And I don't care if you're a D or an R or an I, you know, you have to you have to converse with each other because we're all in the same boat, oh, yeah. you know. And when the boat starts uh, tilting one side mm -hmm. or the other, uh, maybe I'm, it's tilting my side and I'm closer to the water. But rest assured, if it keeps going over, you're going to end up in the water with me. And so we have to begin to look at things in that manner rather than in that I'm a Republican and it's my way or I'm a Democrat and it's my way. It has to be our way. You make a good point, and, and as you say, the legacy of, of uh, former Governor Vicar Till lives on because that's where he was. He yeah. was committed. I mean, uh, the changes that he was making when he was governor, thinking about diversity and the like, and mm -hmm. putting those various commissions together, were were something that was not heard of, if you will. That's right. And in all due respect, even now to date, you know, I mean, uh, Art Robinson uh, was made to. Uh, uh, gave me the title, if you will, as, as uh, engagement chair for the state of Oregon for the Republican Party. That was totally unheard of. Yeah. That's the first time I ever heard of something like that. But it's a tough job, as you say. And uh, we got about a minute left, and I, I guess my, my last point would be the fact that we're going to be doing something here. That we got about three months before the elections, and right. we're going to be inviting candidates, and hopefully we're going to get the gubernatorial candidates, we're going to get senatorial candidates, and, and hopefully they understand. We're going to be talking about issues a major concern, not only in the, from, from this country standpoint, but here in this state. Right. Jobs, 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 jobs. We have to stop giving away our vote, i.e., uh, collecting after electing. Mm -hmm. You right. know, we. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Collecting after electing. Like that. Okay. that has to be uh, there because we've allowed these uh, the people we vote for or elect. To do to run ramshaw and do whatever they want rather than what we want and it's time for us to, to, to bring them back in or if not that maybe looking at a ferguson missouri oh that's a very that, nice that, we, we need to talk, talk about, about that. that in fact that's our next show in fact we'll probably put something together and see what we can talk about that issue that sounds okay, good. good well folks uh, it's been very interesting we really appreciate the time that you've been been with us and um and as as, as bob says we got to get involved we got to get involved we had a low turnout last last time around and it's very important that you do get involved and, and get involved in those candidates when they knock on the door not just don't sit there and smile but ask them those questions that you want to ask about jobs and this that and the other tonight okay with that we want to appreciate it we appreciate it very much and thank you bob okay. hey it's always a yeah. pleasure okay. see you next week oh, okay and see you next week have a good one take care Thanks,